Ivan Trujillo Priego, University of Southern California. How many of us have been privileged with the, the ability to move freely? Can you imagine your childhood without being able to play football with your friends, not being able to ride a bike, or even to run towards your favorite toy? Well, this is the reality for the millions of children all over the world who have suffered from an impaired development. The problem? Diagnosis of impaired development usually comes until the second year of life, time, which the time at which our brain connections have already been formed. And before this happens is when an intervention will actually be most ideal. For this reason, a prompt identification of impaired development can make the difference between having or not a typical development. Therefore, my goal is to break the wall of identification of impaired infant development. But how exactly will this wall fall? We have developed an algorithm to identify infant movement with the use of wearable sensors. These sensors have the capability to record acceleration and angular velocity in three different axes, giving us detailed information of infant movement. They are also lightweighted, portable, inexpensive, and allow us to record a whole day of infant movement activity, therefore recording the wide variety of movements infants perform in their natural environment. Here are two infants who were recorded at seven months of age, one with typical development and one who was in, had impairment at 15 months. Can you tell which one is which? Not really, huh? This is the way diagnosis is done nowadays, requiring a trained expert to visually assess impairment, a very difficult task. Therefore, the importance to di directly sense the detailed information of their movements, which to our eyes seem the same, but are actually different. So our results have shown <clears throat> that when we look at the number of movements at the different ages, infants at risk of impaired of development have produced less number of movements in comparison to the typical developed ones. Now, we have to take into account that they are at risk, meaning that some will have impairment, but some may end up having no impairment at all. So once we knew the, inf the outcomes of the infants, we verified through our algorithm that the infants that had an actual impairment produced less number of movements. From these results, we predict that half of our study group will have impairment. As we continue to analyze other infants through our algorithm we, and other characteristics of their movement, we will be able to confidently identify impairment. This is only the beginning for breaking the wall of infant impaired development. Thank you. <laughs>